Hi everyone, um, this is Charles Kirsch and welcome to the fourth edition of the Backstage Babble Trivia Night and the third one presented as a benefit for dancers over 40. We're so glad you've joined us and we have a very fun night of anecdotes, laughs, and most of all trivia in store for you. In a few minutes we'll hear from Dancers Over 40's president John Safakis about why we're doing it at exactly this time of year and to reveal the big prize for the evening. Just to give you a little bit of intro, Dancers Over 40 was created as a non-for-profit organization to provide a community of support in response to the needs of mature dancers, choreographers, and related artists. The goals include seeking educational opportunities, presenting seminar and panel discussions, and social events geared to topics relevant to mature dancers whose present-day concerns are focused on their ability to continue to live and work in a creative environment and to continue that legacy to the younger generation, like myself, about to begin their journey. Um, Backstage Babble is a podcast hosted by yours truly, interviewing professionals in the theater industry about themselves, their careers, and the people they've worked with along the way. It aims to paint a vivid picture of the golden age of Broadway through conversations with some of its leading players, including Cheetah Rivera, Joel Gray, Harvey Firestein, and others. Um, and now for a little bit about tonight. After all, what is a game without its rules? Um, the game will consist of 10 questions each from each of our five celebrity guest askers who I'll introduce to you at the beginning of each of their rounds. You'll even see some fun overlap in some of the questions tonight. These questions will be answered by our panel of four distinguished theater experts. They will answer the questions by writing their answers down on a piece of paper or an index card and holding them up, just to avoid any copying, not that anyone would cheat, of course. Um, each correct answer will be one point, and there will be no partial credit for questions that have multiple answers. We'll announce the scores between each round, and then the final scores at the end. And to remind our audience, although please feel free to use the chat to comment on the evening and introduce yourself, please don't put the answers to the trivia questions in the chat, even if you know them, because our contestants can see them if they're there. Um, and so with that out of the way, let's now hear from Dancers Over 40 President John Sifakis a little bit about tonight. Thank you for having us, John. Well, thank you, Charles, for doing this. We really appreciate it. Um, we are kicking off our 2022-2023 season, and that's why this is so important to do this. We do our mailing, we do our e-blasts to get people involved so that we can get our donations and our membership dues in so we can do the events every year. Uh, we have a chock full season uh, this year, which starts in August with this, number one. Number two, three weeks from tonight, we are doing the 42nd anniversary of 42nd Street at the Triad Theater, uh, six to nine o'clock. And again, six to seven is just socializing, getting to see everybody, meet everybody. Uh, seven o'clock will be the show. And then after that, about 8, 15, 8, 30, we'll all just take pictures of everyone because that's the important thing. We're videotaping this for Lincoln Center, uh, which is very important uh, at the dance collection, Jerome Robbins collection for dance there. And we uh, always videotape our, our things for the history and legacy and lives of all of our members. So, uh, so we're doing that and we're putting together a 50th anniversary of Pippin in October. And then we have our Legacy Awards, December 5th at Lips Restaurant, uh, where we're honoring Lonnie Ackerman, who's here tonight, uh, Roger Puckett and his wife Yvonne. Uh, Roger was the head of Triton Galleries, and Yvonne, his wife, danced with, with Elvis Presley. Uh, Bobby Hedgen Taylor, who did the surface work for the Tiffin Revival and for the Chaplin show. Uh, Linda Rosie and Echo, who stopped the show in No No Nanette. And uh, we're giving a special award to our advisory board member, Katarina Valente, who was around before your mother was around, Charles, <laughs> <laughs> on the Perry Como show back in the 60s. Great lady. And we're giving an honorary award to her. So that's our season so far. And uh, in order to do that, we need, obviously, members, subscribers, and donations. So uh, we have a great Facebook page, which encompasses everybody, all ages and all genres of dance, all disciplines. Whereas our dancesover40.org page is more geared to us and what we've done. So you can see what we've done in the past. And we do the flea market for Broadway Cares every year. We raised $7,700 last year. Michael Muscle came by and said hello last year. Um, so uh, so that's very important with us because we partner with Broadway Cares and they also fund us a little bit. So, uh, so that's uh, basically what we do when we try and do panels and performances and involve as many uh, people in the mature dance community as we can. Uh, so um, 
So this is a wonderful opportunity for us to also outreach new people like Matt and Joanne, who we didn't know, who joined. Thank you very much, Joanne, um, as a member. And Charles, who's our youngest member. So, um, so we continue to grow even during the pandemic. And we know it's going to be difficult. We know we've had issues. And we did our Tommy Tune event last year live at the Actors Temple. And we did our Legacy Award live. And we did our Harvey Evans Award live. And we had a ton of people. And things are going to happen. You know, people can be masked or unmasked. We've got to go with the flow with this uh, to continue living. Uh, so um, so we'll do our best to, to use both, all the platforms we can. Uh, we'll have a Zoom membership meeting on September 19th, I believe, to kick off with our members a real Zoom, uh, because we have members all over in almost every state except, like, North Dakota, I think. So <laughs> uh, no, that they can all meet and say, you know, I did this show with you, you did that show with me. Um, it's a wonderful opportunity to meet everyone. So uh, so that's uh, who we are and what we do. And thank you, Charles. Your introduction was great. I didn't have to go into any of that. <laughs> okay. uh, thank you for that. We're going to hire you to, to do that in our shows. Um, so... Uh, Absolutely, go on, continue. Thank you so much. Oh, yeah, and, and before, enjoy the show. Oh, yeah, and before you go, would you like to tell us what the prize is? For oh, us? so many prizes. We have so much merch. We don't know how to use it. We don't have a store. We do not have a store, but we do have uh, a wonderful Dances Over 40 hat, which is really great. We have um, a Dances Over 40 tank, not a t shirt, a tank, which I thought would be good for Pilates and whatever. So we have that because a lot of our members do still move. And uh, we have this lovely, if no one uses yet, refrigerator magnet. And we have these little um, stickers, which are very cheap also. You'll see them on our website. And unfortunately, our great masks are um, sold out. They, they really fit well. They have the metal in here. We'll have to reorder, but these are really great. So we will be giving out at least our, our hat and a tank to some lucky winner tonight. Yes, yeah. So thank you, John. Thank you for all You're the welcome, love for that. And so um, one thing I forgot to mention is that if you look in your little episode description, you'll find three links. Uh, one is to the Dancers Over 40 website where you can donate, join, become a member. Uh, one is to my podcast if you want to listen to it. And the third is to a live show that I'm going to be doing upcoming for my podcast at 54 Below on September 6th. So if any of those things interest you, you can find all of that in the episode description. So now without further ado, let's start at the very beginning by introducing you to the four amazing theater people who have agreed to be our panel of experts, answering the very difficult, so get ready, theater questions as you play along with them at home. So first, let's bring on Matt Koplick. Matt Koplick, the most opinionated, foul-mouthed, and passionate theater geek with access to a mic, is the host of the podcast Broadway Breakdown, where every week he and a guest explore Broadway history by diving into the careers of the artists who shaped it. In addition to the podcast, Matt is also an actor who has appeared in Pipe Dream at the Berkshire Theater Group, We the People America Rocks at TheaterWorks, How Prince on Broadway at the Museum of Fine Arts, and more. You might also have seen him on this year's Tony Award singing with the NYC Gay Men's Chorus. So Matt, thank you for being here. Thank you, John. Your research is astounding. I don't know how you found out about Pipe Dream, but that's a deep cut. Okay. Good job. Glad to be here, everyone. You. And next we have uh, Michael Portantier. Michael Portantier is the co-host of the This Week on Broadway podcast on Broadway Radio, a research associate at Celebrity Service International, the editor of CastAlbumReviews.com, and a journalist at BroadwayStars.com and Talking Broadway. He is also a theatrical photographer for Follow Spot Photo. He's the editor-in-chief emeritus of Theater Mania and used to serve as a contributing writer for Playbill, a contributing editor for In Theater Magazine, and a regional editor for Backstage. He is also a cabaret producer whose past credits include The Boys from Syracuse in Concert and 54 Loves Cast Albums, both at 54 Below. And you can see his upcoming show at that venue, Bernstein on Broadway, on September 27th. So Michael, it's an honor to have you. Let me bring you on here. Thank you. Thanks. Thanks. And I just listened to your uh, wonderful podcast with Sandy Duncan. Oh, thank you. That was really great. I, you know, I love her so much, and she, you really spent so much time with her. That was really fantastic. 
Thank you. I appreciate that. And then next, we have Glenn Rosenblum, dubbed the new Prince of L.A. Cabaret. He appeared off-Broadway in Lucky Lucy and the Fortune Man, starring Blythe Danner, Little Mighty with Sam Harris, and The Rise of David Levinsky with Larry Kurt. He has starred regionally in productions of Guys and Dolls, Cabaret, and more. He is also a musical oh, leader lecturer for Crystal Cruises and is the president of his company Celebrity Access Incorporated, which provides celebrity booking services for companies. He recently hosted a popular series at the CV Rep celebrating the golden age of Broadway, featuring Karen Morrow, Eileen Graff, and more. And this evening's guest, Alex Corey, introduced him to me as the West Coast Mr. Musical Theater. So let me find Glenn. Sorry about the trouble with this. Here you are. Um, there you are. Hi, thank you. <laughs> All roads lead back to Alex Corey. <laughs> yes. Once you know her, that's it. That is just it. But um, my goodness, yes. Nice to be here. It's so much fun. I've, I've got my Sharpie and I'm ready. And then last but certainly not least, we have Michael Musto, the iconic columnist. For many years, Michael Musto wrote the column La Dolce Musto for The Village Voice and has also published many books, including Fork on the Left, Knife in the Back, Manhattan on the Rocks, and Downtown. He has appeared on screen in Party Monsters, Nelson Sullivan's World of Wonder, Vamp Bikers, The Fabulous Alan Carr, I Am Divine, Hurricane Bianca, and more. He currently writes the monthly gossip column Read Now, I'll cry later for queer tea and Michael it's such an honor to have you thank you oh thank you Charles and I'm here basically because I believe in your organization which is hosts over 13 <laughs> <laughs> that's all I have to say well, now that we're here, we can start the trivia off with our first asker, Joanne M. Hunter. Um, and good luck to all of you, by the way. And Joanne Hunter danced on Broadway in such shows as Miss Saigon, Kiss Me Kate, Thoroughly Modern Millie, Steel Pier, Chicago, Thou Shalt Not, How to Succeed in Business Without Really Trying, Guys and Dolls, and Damn Yankees, and is now an extremely successful choreographer with credits including Disaster, School of Rock, Harmony, The Current, The Nutty Professor, playing at the Ogunquit Play. Playhouse, Curtains on a Clear Day You Can See Forever, and Andrew Lloyd Webber's Cinderella. And today we're honored to have her asking questions about her frequent collaborator who we've mentioned, Andrew Lloyd Webber. So thank you, Joanne. Hi, Charles. Hi, everyone. Hi. <laughs> Charles, you're, uh, you're a plethora of information and knowledge, and you've done more, however old you are, than I've done in my entire life. So. <laughs> <laughs> So yes, so when are we going to start the questions and all that? Do I start the questions? Yes, yes. Oh, oh. <laughs> oh that was just like right to it. Okay. Dig right. right in. Dig right in. All right, right here in. we go. All right, so. Oh, heavens. Okay. All right, question number one. How old was Andrew Lloyd Webber when he wrote Joseph and the Amazing Technicolor Dreamcoat? <laughs> Matt, I like your eyes. <laughs> <laughs> Is there a is there a ding 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 ding? <laughs> is there a timer, or do we just wait? We can give about like ten seconds. Oh to oh this. oh oh. Well, let, do you want to hold yourself for? So so far, ah uh, ah uh, ah uh, and ah uh, wrong. <laughs> <laughs> he was. He, do I tell him? Yeah yeah. He was he was nineteen. I was going to say, <laughs> but I didn't. <laughs> <laughs> okay, do I go question number two, Charles? Yes, yes. Sir. All right, here we go. Question number two. Who was Andrew's collaborator on Joseph? Uh. Okay, great. Now do you want to hold it? Yeah. I can't see yours, Michael. Can you hold it a little closer? Yep. All oh, correct. Ding 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 ding. Nicely done. Nicely done. All right. Question number three is a two-part question. How many shows did Andrew and Tim write together, not including additional lyrics? And what were those shows? So two-part question. How many shows did Tim Rice and Andrew write together? First part of the question. Ha, ha, ha. 
I'm loving your eyes, Michael. They're cracking me up. I mean, Matt. <laughs> just love you. Oh, my. <laughs> I see the bubble. Think I think I see the light. Oh, yeah. Whatever. I made my decision. I'm sticking to it. Okay. <laughs> no. 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 And, um, and oh, let's see, Michael. How many do you have there, Michael? Who's a one? No. So everyone <laughs> is short by two. So they, they wrote five shows together. The Likes of Us, which was the first show they wrote together when Andrew was 17. Never heard um, of it. I know, well, yeah. <laughs> Evita, of course, y'all did. Joseph, y'all did. Jesus Christ Superstar, y'all did. And Cricket. <laughs> uh, yeah. An another big hit. Uh, yeah, so five. <laughs> wow. <laughs> All right, question number four. Well, we know uh, now. Four. We know now. Now you know. Now you know. Oh, exactly. you experience. You yeah. All right. How many of Andrew's wives are named Sarah? <laughs> <laughs> well, three wives, yes? He's had three correct. Wives. Correct. Okay. He's had three wives total. You know the correct. name of her. Um, eh. No. This is a trick question. Just a guess. <laughs> Uh, Matt and Michael P, you are, oh, and Michael M, you are correct. Yeah. His first two wives were named, Sa are named Sarah, sorry. Are named Based Sarah. on the way that Tim Rice Sarah. Question, like, this is a trick one. This is a trick one. <laughs> no, Sarah Hugel and Sarah Brightman, who were his first two wives. All right. How many children does Mr. Lloyd, Sir Lord Andrew have? <laughs> And while we're answering, if you want to talk a little bit about what it's like working with him and all that. From what it's like working with the Lord, <laughs> I call him. No. Uh, <laughs> you know what? Uh, I, there's nobody that I've ever met in my entire life that knows more about theater, the history of theater, from um, classic theater to contemporary theater, that knows about music, that knows about art, and knows about architecture. He is on extraordinarily intellectual it blows my mind sometimes he you know we'll we're talking and he's talking and i'm just doing my oh yeah i have no idea what he's talking about yeah he's it's it's ridiculous but his knowledge of theater and his love of theater is pretty extraordinary i have to say all right answer oh. two how many children does andrew have, I have oh one. matt you are the winner ding 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 really Yes. Oh, that was two. the biggest guess I've ever had in my entire Excellent life. Excellent guess. He has two from his first wife, Sarah Hugel, and he has three from Madeline, his current wife. All right. Question number six. How many Andrew shows started out as concept albums before they were ever staged, and what were they? And I'd love to ask you during this round, what was it like to be developing the Cinderella during the pandemic and all that? Oh, Jesus, Mary and Josephine. It was, um, it was tricky. We went over there. I went over there in August of 2020 to do auditions, the first in-person auditions we did. And it was tricky. We did it. Luckily, luckily he owns theaters in London. <laughs> so, you know, we have a little bit of an in. So we got to do the auditions on the stage of the Palladium. So I had the stage managers just tape out um, 10 by 10 squares. And I was able to fit uh, five, five dancers, five dancers at a time on the stage. And, and 15 minutes, they, they walk in, I gave them 15 minutes to warm up, half an hour to do some movement, 15 minutes to leave and for us to wipe the stage up for the next group. So that was really crazy and I couldn't partner anyone. I could not do any type of waltzing. And so everything was just like, oh, I hope they can partner. It was tricky. It was really, uh, but we did, you know, it was, it was not, I'm not this lie. It was not easy. And I had, I've never had more nose rapes. That's what I call COVID tests, nose rapes up my nose. <laughs> I think I'm at 178 nose rapes at this point. <laughs> All right. All right. Answer. How many? What, what was the question? Oh, how many, how many answer started. shows started out as concept albums? Matt, Michael, 
are Michael P. You are correct. Michael, we did the exact same thing. <laughs> Matt and Michael, you are correct. Evita, it was not a concept album when it first started. Right, it was. It was. A, it was a, it was a it was school a, show, right? School show. That's right. It was yeah. a fifteen-minute pop cantata that they then made into a 30, 30 minute show or something like that. Yeah. You know, I have I, I have an album of I guess the original version because it's very very short. The, the, I mean, like I think it's like thirty minutes long, right? The original. The yeah, original. I mean, I have that album. The, the, whatever that album is, I have that. How, how did you get that? I found it on a, yeah, I found it in a secondhand record store. Oh, my, and oh. who's who is on the recording? Are they all children? No, no, no. It, it's um, no, it's an adult male narrator, and I forget who else is. I, I'll uh, I'll see if I can get it later and hold it up. Oh, oh. my! I would love to see it. Yeah. I, I actually have, I'm embarrassed to say I haven't listened to it, but I have a demo of The Likes of Us as well. <laughs> wow. So, you do? Yes, yeah. But do you is have it, cricket? Do you have cricket? It, <laughs> no. <laughs> is, it, is it good? Oh, I, I haven't heard it yet, but I will, maybe I can find a way to send it to you in some way or something like that. Oh, my heavens to Murgatroyd. Yes. <laughs> That's amazing. You can start playing it in Cinderella rehearsal. Oh <laughs> my God, that would be funny. I'm gonna say this is our new this is a new song for the show. Andrew <laughs> Andrew wrote another new song and this is it. <laughs> All right. Question number seven. What instrument does Andrew's brother play? Oh Matt is on it. Matt is on it. <laughs> I'm pretty sure. I'm pretty sure. <laughs> Ready? Go. Oh, oh, okay. Everyone is correct except for Michael M. Sorry. Oh. Cello, cello, cello. <laughs> How do you know what his brother plays? <laughs> he missed a producer concert. He people played. are sick. Right. And, and, all, and his, uh, you know, his, um, dun, his da, 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 da. all of those, yeah, all of that song and dance. That was. Yeah. Oh, right. yeah. Oh, I, 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 can't be, I can't be seen in public ever again. Matt, I see um, we went to the same mind school. Exactly. <laughs> That's my vacuum cleaning as well. Yeah. <laughs> All right. What is the name of Andrew Lloyd Webber's company? Again, everyone is correct except for Michael M. But, <laughs> but oh, I, think, I like my name better. I think I am going to write to him and tell him he should change it. <laughs> I, uh, I'm doing this all on the phone, so I can't actually see what everyone else is writing. So I'm missing a lot of the jokes. You are well, <laughs> Mike, Michael, tell us the name of um, the, the company that you believe it should be. I couldn't think of what it was, so I said imaginary buffoon. <laughs> Incorporated. Um, I just saw a little note in the note thingies in the comics. Jay Aubrey Jones. Hi, Jay Aubrey Jones. Hi, Jay. I don't. Oh, he says hi. Look at that. That's so cool. <laughs> Look at me. I'm like I've never been on the internet before. <laughs> All right. Uh, oh, here we go. Not question number nine. Andrew wrote a song for which Olympics? And what was the name of that song? I'm not even writing that one down. I have I couldn't even begin. Um, <laughs> Excellent answer, Michael P. <laughs> yes. No. <laughs> Oh my goodness. Okay, I have to read this out loud. Matt says the 1990 music of the day. Michael says, I have no idea. Uh, Glenn <laughs> says, Los Angeles Cheerio. <laughs> and Michael M says, Memory Senior Olympics. <laughs> All of you are so close, I can't even tell you. Um, no, he wrote for the 1992 Barcelona Olympics in the name uh, Amigos para Siempre. That Sarah Brightman and and they were not they were not married at this time, and 
Oh, some opera singer. <laughs> Look at me, some opera singer. I can't remember who sang, sang it. Monterrey Caballé. Who? Is it Monterrey Caballé? I'm just guessing. That, that, you know what? You should you should be asking a question. <laughs> I no, I, I, I have no way. I'm just guessing. Now, Joanne, when you said they were not married, was it post or pre? Post. Post. That's what I thought. Yeah. Post. post. Oh, post. 1990. Yes, post. Nice to, yeah, post. All right. What? Final question. What is the name of Andrew's autobiography? <laughs> Go. No, no, wait, wait, wait. Oh, oh, oh. oh wait. <laughs> Now you've ever Matt, I don't, I don't you are, Matt, you are yeah. correct. Matt is correct. Unmasked. Nice uh, done. Oh, bravo, God. bravo. Aspects of me was funny though too. <laughs> like almost still. Um, I like that. I, I like aspects of me. Okay. Yeah. Get him to change that too. I'm I will you know what? I'm emailing him right now. Okay. Lord, I'm gonna say, Lord, I think I uh, two things you need to do. I tell him. And you know what you're going to hear about? Crickets. <laughs> <laughs> Nicely done. Nicely done. Who's in the lead right now, Charles? I'm going to oh, get well, to Matt. Well, while I'm telling, do you want to maybe talk a little bit about School of Rock, which is the other? Oh, look at me. I, I'm, I, you're just prompting me. Is that? I didn't know that. What do you want to know about School of Rock? Me and about and about 14 young actors that are more talented than I will ever be. Uh, no, School of Rock was great. You know, it was, um, it actually was a project that I think, actually, I might get this wrong, is Madeline, his wife, actually bought the rights to, and they had always wanted to produce it, but never thought about him writing it. And then uh, I think they held on to it for a long time. And then finally, they decided, okay, I, I think someone talked to Andrew into, you should write, you should write the songs to this. So Jose Carreras, nicely done. Ah. I it up. Nicely done, Christine Dunning. <laughs> Thank you. How could I not know that? That was terrible. But so, um, so he decided to write this, and we we did a, a we did a quick reading with all adults to see if the book worked, and it was really great. And um, uh, Julian Fellows wrote the, wrote the book, who wrote you know Downton Abbey. You think Julian Fellows and School of Rock, but uh, we we did have to help him Americanize it a bit. But he was brilliant. You know, he is brilliant. Anyway, um, we we did a uh, like a. Uh, I'm not gonna say workshop. We actually called it an off Broadway show. We did it at the um, Gramercy Theater, which is like a rock and roll kind of venue, which was perfect. Very like I wouldn't sit on any of the banquets because God knows how much sex would happen on those banquets. <laughs> but um, it was it was thrilling because we and we these ninety percent of the young actors had never done anything theater. They were new and that was something that Andrew was very adamant about that he wanted the kids to be kids and not child actors. He wanted it to feel, you know, real or as real as you can be on stage or you know what I mean? And um which was great, but it made all of our jobs a lot harder. But they were, I mean, the 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 talent, I mean these kids were like and they, you know, people are like, oh they're are they playing? They, they like that was the band. You know, and then we had but when when they were playing live, it was just the four actors on stage and the Dewey Finn playing guitar. It was it was ridiculous. And I remember when we were auditioning, we brought in all the final callback kids and, and we they just kept oh, pairing up different drummer with different guitarist bass and literally and I'm I'm just sitting there and I was recording it thinking these all these kids were between nine and twelve years old. Or maybe at that time, maybe nine and eleven, just jamming. Uh, it was it was it was the most surreal and beautiful thing, and especially all these young actors who are now like popular in Harvard. So yeah, I mean they're like all smarty smart young people, you know, making a difference in the world. So yeah, it was beautiful. I actually really enjoyed working on that project. It was uh, it was very special, I think, and and the fact that the they really developed the book to be not you know when it was done for Jack Black, it was a venue for him. You know, it was his vehicle. But this was more, I think the, it was important for Andrew uh, that it would be more about the, the kids, the young people in the show. You know what I mean? The, their, their journey, their story. So it was really, it was really lovely. It was, a ha it was friggin' hard because of the young ones. And they, not because they were young, but, but um, no, because they were young. Who am I kidding? It was hard because they were young. But because they were just, um, they were raw. You know, they were so raw, but that was also the charm. The, the really the beautiful part about it is that they were so raw and 
and just yeah they were really it was it was a very lovely um memory that i will always hold on to oh yeah and before just to close off with one more guess at andrew Lloyd weber's memoir title <laughs> from the chat um and then finish everything <laughs> Say that again, Charles. Say that again, it's Charles. Just, it says, I changed everything. <laughs> <laughs> yes. And that, 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 that is, yeah. So that, so at the end of this round, we have um, Matt is in the lead with seven. Then we have Michael P with five, uh, Glenn with three, and Michael M with two. So <laughs> that's our for now. And thank you so much, Joanne. This has been wonderful. You're very well. Thank you. And just so you know, Michael M, I love the shirt. So. The shirt makes up oh, for everything. Joanne, do you, jo Joanne, do, you uh, do you remember that the Roundabout Theater was briefly in residence at the Gramercy? What? Do you remember no. that? No, it was, wait a minute. It was a, only for a few years, yeah. It was oh. an additional theater that they had, yeah. yeah. Oh my God, so did they make it a, a proper theater? Because when we worked at it, we it was just basically a deck and the seats were kind of, um. Uh, stadium, but it was raw. There were no, there was no wing space. There was, it was just a box. Did they have? Did they build a proscenium? Do you know? But that, but, but, well, that was before. You, that would have been before you were there, I guess. So uh, yeah. So then it got it got renovated into, as you say, a rock venue, I guess. Right. Yeah, because yeah. it's more like I think they're all they're you know they're one nighters and and that kind of thing. But it's literally it's like the stage was probably four feet, maybe three feet off the ground. Uh, and I mean, the, the lighting, the, the railing was r ridiculous. Like Natasha Catalan had brought in lights that you would thought would light up, you know, Madison Square Garden. It was ridiculous. Yeah. But yeah. it was um, it was great. But it was, I'm telling you, downstairs with the dressing rooms and there was like a settee or a little poof down there. I, I was like, don't sit on this, kids, because who knows what you're going to catch because it was scary. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you again. Thank you. Oh, you're welcome. Thank you. Good luck. Good luck, everyone. Bye. <laughs> Bye. Good night. And next we have another wonderful um, guest asker, uh, the amazing Alex Corey. Alex Corey is a Broadway star whose credits include Fiddler on the Roof, Hello Dolly, Is There Life After High School, Ain't Broadway Grand, Chicago, Triumph of Love, 45 Seconds from Broadway, All Shook Up, and An Evening with Jerry Herman. She also appeared in Milk and Honey at the York Theater, Wonderful Town at Encores, and she also led productions of Funny Girl, in addition to being slated to play Mrs. Straycosh in the canceled Lauren Ambrose revival, Fun fact, um, The Wild Party Company, No Way to Treat a Lady, A Family Affair, Xanadu, and more off-Broadway. But the other Broadway credit we haven't mentioned is The Pirates of Penzance, and that's where she worked with the choreographer that she will be asking about today, Graciela Danielle. So hi, thank you. Wow, you, you are scary, Charles. <laughs> you are <a> scary child. <laughs> Hi, everybody. I have a, uh, I have a yes. question for Alex. Can, can I assume uh, that you've got your hands on the video of the the, the Delacorte uh, production of Pirates? The, the, the archival one? Yes, yeah. Um, I have seen it. And it, actually, it was fascinating because it was made two weeks after I came back into the show from my skull fracture. Because I was, oh. remember, I was, well, how, why would you remember? <laughs> um, I was hit by a bicycle in, during Tech Week in Central oh. Park. Oh, gosh. And I was out of the show for a month. And just to tell you that Joe Papp was the first person to call me in the hospital. I was, I was in a coma for a couple of days. But um, um, he was the first person to call me and say, when you are ready... Your job is here. Oh, wow, that's great. And uh, yeah. he's always been sort of a god to me ever since. Um, and uh, uh, yeah, I saw it. And so I was quite interested because I always thought I'd look so much better if I was really thin. <laughs> <laughs> and there I am on the archival tape, really thin, looking like I just got out of Auschwitz thinking, you know what, I don't care. Let me look fat. At least I'll look healthy. <laughs> That's, and uh, I love the archival tape because it really was us instead of the, the British film that was made. 
Right. Um, which I have another, you know, sad story about, which is that, you know, I always thought that as I was growing up, that if you were the voice of someone in a movie, <laughs> like Marnie Nixon must be the ugliest woman on the face of the earth. <laughs> I always thought that. So, <laughs> of course, she wasn't. She's quite beautiful. But then when I saw the British film and the young woman playing Edith, and I thought, Jesus, she's, I'm, I'm even better looking than she is. And I'm no beauty. So now they're all going to think that, oh, my God, she's the ugliest woman in history. So it's very screwed up. It's it, I, I did a lot of therapy on this. Gotcha. <laughs> Good night, everybody. <laughs> I feel but like I do doing... have great questions about Graciela Danielle. I feel who, like we're doing therapy right now. Who I, I, I absolutely adored working with her, and I wish I'd been able to do many, many more shows with her. But uh, of course, uh, after Pirates, I never had another hit. So there you are, except for fiddling. Um, anyway, so there you go. Uh, would you like your first question, gentlemen? That's not okay, this is two parts. How many Tony Awards has Graziella Danielle been nominated for? And how many did she win? Oh my goodness. Um, Michael Mustro and Matt have the right answer. Well, you had the right, yeah, uh, right. Yes. She was nominated for 10. Oh my God. And she won none. She was given a special Tony a few years ago uh, for Lifetime Achievement. That's crazy. So that is the cruelty of show business. Yeah. There you go. Oh, so the second question is name three of the shows that she was nominated for. I wanted to do five, but Mr. Kirsch <laughs> said no, cut it to three. Okay. Uh, 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 yes. Uh, yes. Um, Matt, yes. Um, Michael, yeah, yes. Um, Glenn, yes. Um, Michael Portantier, I'm afraid you only had one. Uh, yeah, that's right. Okay. Well, she didn't actually do Susical. Oh, okay. <laughs> She got replaced on Susical, I believe. Oh, she what? Yeah, it, she and Frank were both replaced out of town on Susical by um, Rob Marshall, I think. Oh, so that's where I had that in my head. From. If you'd like to know the other shows, it's Pirates, Ragtime, Once on This Island, The Goodbye Girl, Dangerous Games, Chronicle, um, The Mystery of Edwin Drew, The Rink, and The Visit. And didn't win for any of them. Psychos. She was nominated for the visit. I don't remember that. She was nominated for the visit. Is she good friends with Susan Lucci and Glenn Close? <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> that there is a question coming out about up about her her good friends. Okay. Um, prior to becoming a brilliant choreographer and director. Graziella was in the ensemble or featured in six Broadway shows. I wanted you to name three. Charles says you only have to name two. Oh, sorry. Uh, Let's see what's here. Um, yeah. Yeah, yeah, okay, Matt, you got two. Uh, uh, no, Sweet Charity is not on there. 
Okay. And, um, and Chicago and uh, neither is Pippin on there. She was not in Pippin. And Follies and Promises Promises are, yes, correct, Michael Musto. Uh, she also, her first Broadway show was What Makes Sammy Run. Wow. Wow. Um, her second was Here's Where I Belong. Then she did Promises, Coco. Uh, and Follies in Chicago. Okay. Uh, anybody any have any questions? No. Okay. <laughs> um, name one Broadway production for which I'm going to... Uh, she was nominated in more than one category. I changed it a little, Charles. <laughs> Oh gosh. Uh. Okay, Michael P, are you just Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> okay. Um no, the only person who has it right is Matt. And um uh wow. You're a child. Um, the reason I changed the question, Charles, is because Once on this Island, yes, was for choreographer and director. But for Chronicle of a Death, foretold, she was nominated in three categories, director, choreographer, and book writer. Oh, wow. So I had to fix it, Charles. Um, <laughs> Then, okay, fifth question. For which three Broadway stars has she assisted in the creation of one-woman shows? Three of them. And Alex, I'd love to ask you while, while people are writing, what was it like with the Pirates of Penzance transferring from the park to Broadway and were there changes made? Then? Um, the only changes were actually in the, the cast because um, in the park we had um, Patricia Rutledge playing oh. Ruth. Uh, she was lovely. Um, and yeah. uh, gosh, I'm trying to think. There were some uh, ensemble members who were changed uh, when we moved over. Um, it went, it was very fast. Uh, the rehearsal process, because we all walked in the first day for the Broadway, and uh, Sue Anderson was the conductor at that, uh, at that point, the assistant conductor, and uh, she she took us through the score, which had been we hadn't done for four months, but she took us through the score, and she said, "Okay, bye, have a nice week off," <laughs> and you know, it really was very easy to put together. Um, uh, I, I, at least I thought it was, and um, I'm usually complaining. So, uh, no, it was it was fine. I think the hardest thing to get used to was being the 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 Uris, now the Gershwin was such a, a kind of strange barn to be in, you know, mm -hmm. and. Um, and uh, and it was it was it was actually interesting because I don't remember having issues in the park with security, but when we when we uh, started on Broadway, um, and I I asked you know I asked Linda Ronstead, what are you wearing to the opening my party, and she was like I I'm not going, and I said what do you mean you're not going? She said. I said, Carol Channing went to her opening night party. And Linda said, Alex, you have no idea what it is like being a rock star. And we had tremendous security because the month before we opened, John Lennon had been shot at uh, the Dakota and Linda was terrified. And we, she walked around with that Akita all the time 
And we actually, we were very glad and lucky that we had that kind of security because some crazy did try to get back and stabbed our head security man. Um, So, you know, life was already changing in the 80s. Yeah. Yeah. Um, But but to get the show on was was not hard at all. And I also have one other thing. To say about it, which is most second nights after opening nights um, are usually kind of downers for an audience. The, I mean, for the cast, because that opening night audience is so incredible. Joe Pep brought in the entire Fire Islanders to see the second night. <laughs> so it was probably the best second night in the history of Broadway. So. Anyway, oh, questions. Oh, no, answers. The answer. <laughs> yes, okay. Um, all right. Uh, uh, Michael Musto has this right. So I have he to say, wrote, Alex, uh, technically the TV show was not a one person show, but I knew what you were going for, so. Oh, okay, all right. Um, at, there were dancers. Yes. Yeah. Okay. So that was it. Was Cheetah Rivera, Barbara Cook, and Elaine P- uh, Strip? I was Elaine P- No, Elaine Stritch. I was. I thought it was Elaine. I wasn't sure. Yeah. So so that that was okay. Sixth question: Which musical did Graciela Daniel write Spanish lyrics for? Mm. I did the show. I didn't know at the time. <laughs> you did the show? I did the show at the Long Wharf. Well, the I, I think maybe I, I figured it out. But I, yeah, I did the show at the Long Wharf um, 100 years in the 90s, 100 years ago. Well, that is, this is probably not the answer. <laughs> OK. Uh, Glenn has it. Matt has it. Michael, you don't have it. <laughs> I'm just gonna say dangerous games. Dangerous games. I know it's wrong. Okay. 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 The answer is working. Ah. Um, oh. Yeah, there's oh, a beautiful boy. number that the uh, fruit pickers sing. Uh, that uh, Matt Saldivar was the 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 leading performer on. Um, gorgeous, gorgeous, sad. But I worked on my um, accent, which was. Okay, you ready? Number seven, name the Oscar-winning film director for whom Graziella did musical staging and one of his films that she did the musical staging on. Where's my thing? (laughs) It's interesting. Um, One of these films was made into a musical, and I wonder why she didn't end up doing the musical. Um, uh, who knows? Maybe she was tired. <laughs> I don't know. I have no idea. I never got to see that one. Does anyone have guesses, sir? I'm just your hints. Yeah, those are hints. Okay, where are the where are the two movies, Glenn? You got the right director. Oh, yes. the movie Bullets Over Woody Broadway album. Woody, Woody Allen. B- Bullets yeah. over Broadway and the uh, the one with um, Goldie Hawn, which I can't. <laughs> Everyone says I love you. That is correct. So, uh, do we give Glenn half a point? Oh, I'll give Glenn the whole point for that one. For the <laughs> okay, they were they were all Woody Allen. They were Mighty Aphrodite. Oh, Everybody right. says I love you and Bullets over Broadway. Okay, eight is a Chicago question. Uh, so I don't know if uh, Candy Brown's going to get on this one at all. In Chicago, what was Graciela's character's name, and what language did she speak? Uh, I actually had another part to this question, but Charles nixed it. <laughs> Just give me half a point if I got a half right, please. I need the points. Okay, Matt gets two, 
Uh, Michael only gets one. Um, Michael and also only gets uh, one. And Glenn gets two or one. What's the language? What's the language? Hungarian. Oh. Yeah, <laughs> Hungarian. And I wanted to ask you <laughs> what the speech was about. Oh. <laughs> and Charles said no. Oh. The, the answer oh. was... She's so you know, she was she was explaining who actually killed her husband in oh. the speech. Yeah. That she was really not guilty. <laughs> um and and it was something like the you know Eastern European mafia that You mean wait no, you, you oh, yeah. mean you mean she's the one who did not kill her husband. That's right. She's the yeah. only one who did did not kill uh, okay. her husband. I thought you said the, the other thing. Oh so. yeah, no. And she gets hanged. And I have to tell you that every night that was very moving for me, saying goodbye to her. Every single performance I did, it was very moving for me. But you know, there's so much unfairness in the world. Okay, uh, number nine, name the musical that Michael John Lacusa wrote about Graciela's life. Just, I think, this year or last year at the Old Globe, it was premiered. Yeah. And hopefully, hopefully it'll come to New York. I, you know, I had an easier question here, but. I can name you the two shows that they worked on. <laughs> <laughs> I was going to be about that. You know? I, I don't know what the what this one. The giant was one, right? It was giant? Um, well, oh. uh, there's Marie Christine, mm -hmm. uh, Dan, and Bernarda Alba, I think, are the. Yeah, three. and oh. uh, there's another one. There's a fourth one. I I think so. Something that like didn't happen. <laughs> you know, one so of many of those workshops. <laughs> Take this workshop, it's going to Broadway. <laughs> yeah. But, okay, anybody want to put it up there? Oh, Glenn has it. Glenn has it. <laughs> I uh, saw it. Oh, yeah, you I got Wild it. Party, right? <laughs> right, which, uh, no. Um, anybody else? It was called no. the, 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 the Gardens of Anuncia. Glenn, did you say you saw it? Did I that? did. Oh, how was it? It was very interesting <laughs> and beautifully staged. We'll talk later. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Finally. It was the, the first show I saw after COVID with the mask. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Tenth question. I have an 11th, but Charles said no. Um, which 2022 Broadway show? was Graciela supposed to provide musical staging for, but was replaced on, and this will probably give it away, by Alex Sanchez. You want a hint? I'm gonna just take a guess. I'm taking a guess. You wanna hold up the... Hold it up. Yes, thinking. yes. The two of you who guess yeah. are correct. I brought Wait, paradise, and then I'm putting paradise back. <laughs> okay, that's it. The three of you then got it right. <laughs> I was going to add the hint. Nobody so got paid. So okay. She would be waiting for her check. So she made yeah. <laughs> They paid Graciela the same amount they paid the people who did do that show. So there you go. <laughs> she does what, say that again. Win, Matt? win, Matt. I said she, she got, got paid the same amount of money as people who did work on the show got paid. So. <laughs> Wow, it's just so bizarre. Yeah. Strange. Yeah. Um, so I was actually going to, the other question I was going to ask was, uh, what was the event in Graziella's life that, that made her move from Paris to New York? Because she did not come here from Argentina. She went to Paris to work at Paris Ballet and all of that. And I just mm -hmm. thought this was sort of fascinating. I don't know. Uh, anybody have a guess? No. Nope. She saw West Side Story in Paris. Huh? And she said, I have to do that. That's yeah. what I want my life to be. Fabulous. And so she came to New York. 
So I've had a lovely time, gentlemen. Thanks, Thank Carol. Um, Thank and while he's tabulating, does anybody have anything interesting they want to talk about? Well, then she saw, the, she saw the movie of West Side Story many years later. She moved back to Paris. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, I loved it. I loved it. So did I. I'm just joking. But you know what I loved the most is that when I saw Billy Elliot, I saw that boy, David um, Alvarez. Alvarez. And I yeah. fell so in love with him that I wanted to kidnap him after seeing <laughs> Billy Elliot. And to see him come back as Bernardo was like, yay, he's still dancing. <laughs> really well. But yeah. you know he had he had left show business and then he came back. I know he was yeah. like in the military. Oh. Yes, yeah. Oh, they saw yes. him. At work, I think I believe the casting director was like, "What's David Alvarez up to these days?" I'm like contacted him specifically. Yeah, for uh, and what a what a great thing! What a yeah. great thing! Oh. Although he was in, you know, he was in the on the town revival. Um, oh, was he? Yeah, I think at least briefly as a replacement, but then. Uh, but then after that, he left, is when he yeah, left, I think. Yeah. Joined the military. <gasps> Alex, Alex, can I, Alex, can I just say something first? Well, I am a fan. And uh, one of my favorite things that you've done is a song about wanting to be rich and famous without having to do all the work. Oh, yes. yes. Which is kind of a yes. viral sensation. I want to be discovered while I'm sitting on my ass. Yes, <laughs> David right. Friedman wrote that yes. song. And um, it was for uh, uh, an event uh, that uh, uh, John Snedarsik did. Uh, remember when they used to do new writers at the Donnell Library? Yeah. All the new writers coming up on uh, in theater, and he did a Christmas event, and he asked people to write Christmas songs. <laughs> and um, David was working on this, and he kept saying, "Is this funny? Is this funny? I don't know. Is this funny?" <laughs> and he gave it to me, it was, you know, and I actually read it, the first um, performance, the performance that we did, because he had just finished it. And, it, it, you know, it was scary, because we had no idea how people were going to react, and <laughs> they loved it. Um, it's like everybody got it. Your rendition you know is priceless. I mean? Your rendition of it is priceless. Well, I always say to people, if you grew up with my mother, <laughs> you have just the right amount of rage <laughs> to put into that song. Esther. Okay. Esther, right? Esther, that's right. <laughs> Glenn and I discovered we have the same birthday. We grew up 10 minutes apart on Long Island, and um, our mother's names are both Esther. But her, his is still kicking, you know, and... Uh, He's, he's taking very good care of her, as a nice Jewish son should do. <laughs> and oh, yours, yeah. yours is still alive in your mind, I think. Uh, I will never die. <laughs> <laughs> the rage is still there. She will never die. Oh, yeah. And so uh, I have the source, but I just had one question, something I missed. Um, Michael Musto and Michael Portnoy here. Did you get that question right about Paradise Square? I'm sorry, I didn't hear that. I did not. I did not. Oh, you didn't. Did you? Uh, about didn't. Paradise Square. Did you get that? Paradise question? Square. Yeah. He said yes, it was yes, different. Yes. Right. I wrote yes. it across it. I started writing across it. I was sort of putting it back. Okay. Because there were so many teaching people on that show, right? Okay. So, are you still tabulating, Charles? Oh no! Now I have the scores. Okay. So, um, Matt again has seven. Um, Michael Portantier has one half point. Uh, Glenn has six points, and Michael Musker has five and a half. So my questions weren't that hard. No. Well, they weren't for me. But as I said before, I don't. I, I, I'm woefully ignorant about Grand Theater. Um, well, you know, if if Charles hadn't changed some of mine, they would have been harder. <laughs> Don't feel bad. Thank you, Charles. Are you pointing a finger at a 14-year-old, Alex? No. What? Are you pointing a finger at a 14-year-old boy? I, I'm in love with him. I'm in love with him, but this is how mothers talk, Jewish mothers talk about their children. Do you want to kidnap him like you wanted David Alvarez? Uh, uh, 
Uh, there are time. Yeah, I've thought about that. His, his parents probably wouldn't like it. Um, anyway, Glenn, I'm going to the children's sing later. Oh, I'll, well, depending on when this ends, I will yeah. come. Okay, that's why I'm dressed up. <laughs> <All right. laughs> I wore beads. <laughs> well, thank you so much, Alex. Thank you. Okay, thank you, Charles. Bye. Bye, guys. Bye Alex. That was such a fun round. And next we have another great guest. Um, it's my honor to welcome another veteran uh, Broadway dancer, Candy Brown. Uh, Candy Brown appeared on Broadway in the original productions of Hello Dolly, Pippin, Pearly, and Grind. She also danced with Shirley MacLaine and Liza Minnelli in their solo shows, toured with applause, participated in the early workshops of a chorus line, and appeared on screen in Ollie and Quantum and in addition to all of this, she also played with June, who you may know as Six from the Cell Block Tango in the original production of Chicago. And now here she is to ask about that musical. Hi, Candy, thank you for being here. Oh, I think there might be a Wi-Fi issue. Um, I think, uh, hmm, I'm not sure. Hi, everybody. Oh, this has been uh, a gas. I hope, um, <laughs> I hope I'm not, they, they aren't too difficult, but yeah. Oh, okay. um, I think it's a delay. I think there's an audio delay. Yeah, yeah. Um, there's some sort of delay. Maybe um, she should go out and come in again. Yeah, I think um, if it's all right with you, Kendi, I think, oh, or that I think it's been fixed. Has it been fixed? Talk. Say something. Oh, I, I, I find it looks like it's so muted. Oh, there we go. Oh. Oh. Okay. Can you hear me now? Can you yes. hear me now? Can you hear me now? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Hello, Candy. Oh, I, th I think we're still on a bit of a Ooh, delay. Hi. <laughs> Really? Let me let me try. I went and, to um, Chrome. I got, got off my other. Uh... Let me see. Oh, I'm sorry. About that. So I think Candy will try to come back and let's switch the order of the rounds a little bit. And next up, we'll have another great um, Broadway star, the wonderful uh, Lonnie Ackerman. So Lonnie yeah. Ackerman starred on Broadway as Evita and Evita and Grizabella and Cats. And her other Broadway credits include So Long, 174th Street, The Magic Show, and No No Nanette. She also appeared on screen in Annie and off-Broadway in Diamonds, Brownstone, Mike, Starting Here, Starting Now, Dames at Sea, and How Do You Do, I Love You. But her Broadway debut was in George M., where she was choreographed by Joe Layton, who she'll be asking questions about today. So let's bring her on. Thank you, Lonnie. Thank you for being here. Hi. 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 Hey, Matt, you're a winner. For now. <laughs> Sorry, uh, guys. I let them go so long. Oh, wow. We'll this see how this one goes. So shall we start? Yeah. Right. Let's do it. So my <clears throat> my subject was uh, is Joe Layton. And he was actually the second director I worked, worked for after high school. Um, the first show I did was... How do you do? I love you, which was a Malfi Shire, which was um, pre Broadway and remained pre Broadway. Did not, we got a review in Washington that said um, it was called um, How do you do? I love you. And it, the uh, review was Goodbye, we hate you. Um, <laughs> so we never made it in. Um, I forgot who, oh, I forgot who it was who was the critic for Washington back in the 60s. But anyway, um, the, the author, the playwright was um, um, Michael Stewart and he was writing George M. So he had all the girls come and audition. And of course it was a tap show. And of course I was a ballet dancer and did not tap, but okay. So I went anyway. And that began just a, a great relationship with Joe and, and um, what a great way to start on Broadway, um, opening on your 19th birthday at the Palace Theater. And it was just, it, it was just great. So I have questions for, um, from Joe, okay? Number one, 
What was Joe Layton's real name? Uh. <laughs> Come on, Michael P. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Glenn is the closest. It was um, <laughs> Joseph Lichtman. Okay. You were close. Sorry, guys. Charles okay. led us astray in his email the other day. Yes, exactly. <laughs> I mean, that was the first stage name he used, but that it wasn't. Right. It's the only um, thing. Okay, number two. How old was Joe when he got his first Broadway show? <laughs> What's that? Uh, okay. Um, Matt is the closest. He was 16. Wow. He was, he was still in school and he got in as a dancer. And do you know which show it was? Oklahoma, I think. Yeah. Right? Wow. You're so young. I'm famously actually 52. I just moisturize really. Oh, okay. Well. <laughs> okay. So. Which Oklahoma, not the original. Yes. The original, yeah. The original. Really? Yes, he was 16. At the end of the run, maybe? Oh, you got me. Yeah. Wow. I got, yeah. Cause he amazing. Was, amazing. Yeah. He yeah. was um he's he was a child performer. His parents, I think he performed at, at Tenemen, you know, the, the um summer resorts. Um Tanaman. Tanaman, thank you. Yeah. Um okay. So okay, we got that. We're actually up to number four. Uh, what was Joe's wife's name? She was wonderful. I'm not going to disrespect her by even trying. It's going to be so. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Joan McCracken, wasn't that... Um, Fossey's person. No, okay. second. Well, I knew it was someone's. Okay. It was Evelyn Russell. Oh. Okay. And she was an actress, and she passed away before he did. Um, Charles, you're keeping score? Yes, yeah. Okay. Um, number five. Oh, we did change number five. Okay. Um, okay. This is interesting, I think. What actress... In an early example of non-traditional casting was the understudy for the role of Faye Templeton, played by Jackie Alloway in the original George M. This is 1968. So Can really- Can you say that again? Sure. What actress in an, um, an early example of non-traditional casting, 1968, was the understudy to the role of Faye Templeton, played by <clears throat> Jackie Alloway in the original George M. She went on to be a really big star, big television star. Does anyone have a guess or is it over there? Glenn, you're amazing. Glenn has it, <clears throat> Janelle Allen. Oh, love her. And it was it was amazing because Jackie was this gorgeous blonde goddess. And yeah. it it was like we went from blonde goddess to Lena Horn. You know, yeah, coming, up, it's coming down the stairs in the white gown. It was just it was wild. And I think the atmosphere in, in that show is nobody thought anything of it. It was oh yeah, Janelle is the understudy. It was that's the way he he was so ahead of himself. Um he he had choreographed what was re what replaced um, the um, it was a medley of you know uh, Yankee Doodle Dandy over here it was very Americana it replaced this brilliant ballet which which took place over the same amount of period of time you know from the twenties to I think World War Two but it was it was just too too ahead of its time too artistic and. You know, they they went for the um, middle of the road, but it was a, it was an amazing ballet, and he was amazing. Um, okay, um, okay, number six. 
where did Gone with the Wind first premiere? What year? And what was the first title? Want me to say it again? Oh, yeah. no, the musical. The musical. The musical. Yeah. The musical. I'm sorry, not the movie. Oh. The first incarnation of Gone with the Wind. Where was it first um, produced? It was five hours long when it was first produced. <laughs> oh, really? You just want to kill yourself. Uh, no. Yes, Michael P. Um, you got half of it right. Okay. Oh, you got two thirds of it right. It was Tokyo. It, the name was Scarlet, but it was 1969. Wow. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Then, then there was London, and it was still called uh, Scarlet. And then when it came to um, the Amundsen or the Music Center, um, I think it was 1975, I think. 72 or 73 was the West End. Here's a little anecdote about Gone with the Wind. I wasn't allowed to use this question because nobody would get it. <laughs> um, maybe Joanne Hunter would have gotten it. So um, during a performance at the Music Center, or the Dorothy Chandler, I forget which theater. It was the Dorothy um, Chandler, I think. Thank you. Um, Joe was so furious. Uh, <laughs> he wanted to fire and basically kill this stagehand who happened to walk across the stage during a performance, got into a light and cast a 30 foot shadow of somebody in a pair of jeans. <laughs> with the wind. And I was gonna ask, who was that stagehand? <laughs> Okay, I'll give you a clue. He is the father of my children. <laughs> <laughs> it was my husband. He was a stagehand and he just happened to saunter across the stage, 30 foot shadow, and I and, and Joe really just wanted to kill him because um, it was a whole other show. But he didn't find <laughs> out. Yeah, and that is my husband, he just, marches to his own drum. Okay, number... I'm hoping he walks by you tonight. That would be fun. <laughs> he came in earlier. Oh, okay. But you weren't on yet. I thought that... Uh... Um, okay, number seven. Here's another good one. Uh, what were the names of the two... What were the stage names of the two dogs in George M? And who were their, tra their stage trainers? Who were the dancers? Who were their trainers? First, their names. Oh my gosh. <laughs> I know that's sick, isn't it? I couldn't <laughs> help it. <laughs> oh no. Here's an anecdote. Like <clears throat> this can't. Um, <laughs> Glenn. <laughs> oh, cute. Okay. No. Um, so one was a sheepdog. Her name, her stage name was Frida. And the other was a terrier. And her name was Spot, her stage name. And the trainers were James Divis oh. and me. <laughs> we were the dog trainers. Fabulous. Yeah. And I, I had this huge sheepdog. She was really sweet. These are too um, easy. These are much too easy. <laughs> I know. I wanted to make them harder, but you know, you're, you're dealing with Charles, and he, he has this, this specific rules. Um, okay, number eight. Um, uh, which musical was Joe working on when he fell out of his loft and broke either his leg or hip? I'm not sure. Um, and what was the name of what was the name of the musical? Can we get anything resembling a hint, like within a five-year window? I used to I used to know this, and I don't remember. <laughs> it's, it's our time, Michael. Can you give us a little more of a hint? Um, okay, can I? I'll give you the year, nineteen seventy-six. Oh, all right. You got it. No. Oh. <laughs> uh, no, that was later. Oh, yeah. 
could have been earlier. Um, okay, here's another hint. It's about marriage. Oh, no. Whoops. <laughs> um, Lenny Baker was in it. Oh, yes, okay. Oh. No, no. Yes. <laughs> yes. Yay, Michael P. got it. After five years. You're right. That's okay. I'm here to help. And he was, Matt got he was it. replaced, though, right? He was replaced by Anna White Anna and Jim Zach. Oh, my gosh. I know. Um, uh, okay. Well, here's another one. Um, oh, these, uh, I mean, these are depressing. Um, which show was Joe working on at the time of his death? Used to know that too. Um, okay, I'll give you a hint. The title is the opposite of death. Oh. Yay! Yay! <laughs> Glenn, you got this. It's the opposite of I death. I saw. I saw it already. So oh, I you can't saw it. Okay. Oh, you saw it. I didn't see it. What is it? The life. The life. Oh, the light. <laughs> he didn't get very far into it. Um, let me see. Okay. Joe, um, he he directed and choreographed the Rockettes for a long time. And he was the first, because he was so ahead of himself, ahead of the time, he was the first to hire, he hired the first Latina Rockette who stayed a Rockette for 16 years, uh, then became head of wardrobe. And, and since then, has written an autobiography and was went in went to audition for the movie of In the Heights already in her 60s and got into the movie because she was so fabulous. Also a dancers over 40 member. Yes, dancers over 40 member. So we have to name this person. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> uh. <laughs> this is wrong. This is wrong, but oh no. no. Oh, okay. Lillian Cologne. Oh. Uh. Okay. Um let me see. That's well actually that's it, but I have an extra uh, question if you want to give it a credit. shot. Oh yeah. So, okay, what? Can I yes. ask that, Charles? Okay. Um what was the name? Joe also choreographed ballets for several, you know, um, renowned companies. Um, what was the name of the ballet Joe choreographed in 1972? I'll give you the it? company. It was for the Joffrey Company. Oh, for the Joffrey Company. Yeah. Mm. Want another hint? Yes. Okay. Um, what comes after single? Single, and then you have, and, in, and after the next one, you have triple. So what's in the middle? So, double. Yes, no. close. Double what? Doubles. Double life. Double exposure. Oh. Uh. <laughs> well, I was like, did I make really a lot of bombed out really badly. Um, well, Charles said to make them difficult. <laughs> <laughs> but um, Joe was amazing. Um, I, I adored working with him. And uh, I think he had so much left to to put on the stage. Uh, we did. I, I was in his uh, production of Annie, the movie, um, and actually was directed by John Huston, which was pretty funny. Uh, and what was really amazing about California, we were three Broadway, we were the Boylan sisters, um, Nancy Sinclair, Murphy Cross, and me, and Broadway singers. And um, I said to, oh my God, who was the musical di director? Um, oh boy, what an idiot. Okay, I forgot his name. But I said, when are we going into the studio to record do 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 whatever it was? And he said, I don't know how to tell you girls this, but <laughs> they hired studio singers. Ah. Oh. I said, you hired Broadway singers and now you're paying extra for studio singers. And we just all kind of like went, all right, you know, whatever. <laughs> um, 
So, Can I ask a Joe Layton uh, trivia question? What movie musical uh, choreographed by Joe Layton later became a stage musical not choreographed by Joe Layton? The one with um, James Caan? The one with the I don't know, but that's not what I'm thinking. I don't know. Um, that he choreographed, wow. Anybody? Was it Molly Brown? No. That was a stage musical first. Yeah. Thoroughly, mod thoroughly modern, modern movie. Oh. Oh, right, right. Yeah. We should switch Lonnie, places. Lonnie was, was born in biggest, Lonnie was born in yes. his biggest hit on Broadway. Say that again. It was Barnum his biggest hit on Broadway? Um, maybe it was. Maybe. Probably, yeah. Maybe. I mean, he did win the Tony for George M. and for No Strings. Um, but I think Barnum probably lasted the longest. Definitely made the most money, I would say. Probably. Um, well, he he chore he didn't direct it, but he choreographed or did musical staging for the original Sound of Music, didn't he? So oh yeah, was... he did. He choreographed it. I saw that. <laughs> do we do we count that? It is. A... And you just got uh, whatever Charles says. If you want that, you you've got it. <laughs> um, so okay, well you did you did very well. <laughs> Thanks a lot. Thank you so much. And it was a pleasure stumping you. <laughs> Thank you for those questions. I appreciate it. Um, Thank you, at the end of that round is um, Matt with two and one thirds, um, Michael Portantier with one and two thirds, and Glenn and Michael Musto each with one. So that. <laughs> and. Fill the finish with that one, guys. So can, you give, can you give us our subtotal so far? Well, that was just that round. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah, that round. I thought maybe I had blanked out and we only got one question right the whole time. <laughs> oh, no. All right. and no, then, but, uh, Charles, can you give us our subtotals? Oh, well, I'll, I'll do that at the end. I'll always do okay. yeah, that's fine. <laughs> Uh, so I'm going to try to bring back on Candy Brown. Now, if it doesn't work again, I think what I'll do is I'll leave her on screen for everyone to see, but I'll read the questions because I have them as well. So okay. we'll see what happens. But hopefully the audio is right. Um, hi. Thank you. Oh, oh, I'm sorry. I, I think it's happening again. The audio connection so i'm going to I'll, I'll see what i can do with these questions and see what happens there so um the first question that andy we... brown will be played by charles kirsch <laughs> <laughs> the first question is um what what was the inspiration for the song mr cellophane oh okay Knew my good luck was going to run out. <laughs> oh, you yeah. uh, no, for good. Oh, yeah. well, Glenn and Michael. Are both... Charles. Huh? No, mine is wrong. I think Michael P is right. Oh, well, Glenn and Michael P are both right. So, oh, in it's the Burt Williams song, Nobody. Exactly. Yeah. So I'll give you both that point. Um, the next um, is there was a character named Henry Glassman that was cut from Chicago during the out of town tryouts in Philadelphia because the they thought he was redundant. Can you name the character's profession and the actor who played him? Yes, um, I know the character. I know the profession. I don't know if I remember the name of the actor. Let's see, um, David Rounds. Uh, Glenn has it all right. Um, Michael Portantier and Matt get a half point each. Um, sorry, Michael, you're well, freezing Mike, a little oh, bit. Oh, was, was he an agent? There, an agent? Yeah. Yeah. They're author, but not the title. Yeah. Oh, yeah. So Glenn gets all of that. Um, Michael Portantier gets half. Matt gets hot. And Michael must have, sorry, what did you say? I, I, I was wrong. I was wrong. Let's, oh, not even, no. let's not even discuss what I wrote on that card, please. It was wrong. And then, 
There's a note here that the Mama Morton sort of became the agent as well. Okay, so um, number three, why did Liza Minnelli do five weeks of Chicago? How specific do we need to be? <laughs> um, I say anything around what's right. Um, go, <laughs> um, <laughs> Is that well? The, I'll give a half point to Michael Muster and to Glenn Rosenblum because those are somewhat, if not the full story. Can um, you hear me at all, Charles? Oh, we can now. Oh, yeah. Now, now we can. Um, the, and those, I'll, I'll, I'll give those all. Um, I, I'd say Matt should get the full point, and the rest yes. of them will be points. It's um, she was recovering. Right, she had surgery on her vocal. Yes. Cord. Was there was can you hear me thing? at all, Charles? Oh, yeah, we can hear you. It's just on a bit of a delay. It just, but yeah. So, um, oh, number four. Um, oh, Charles, can I just say I was there to see it, and I've been told, of course, Liza was taking over the role, but most of the audience didn't know, and they made an announcement before the show. At this performance, the part of Roxy Hart will be played by, and the audience went, oh, because Gwen was out, and they said, Liza Minnelli, and the audience went insane. And she was brilliant. But my favorite is always going to be Cheetah and Gwen together. Oh. <laughs> Which I went back to see Cheetah and Gwen uh, together many more times. A little more really specific than that, Michael Musto. More specific? I don't know how Liza learned that part so fast, but she had it down, and she was brilliant. As, as well, you. I mean, there no, there there was notice about it. Um, we we got tickets for, to see Liza. I mean, it was was well, it early on, and it was a call I got Close from a publicist yeah. my school paper, and really insiders at this point only knew she was not on the marquee, and they really had to make the announcement where a lot of the audience was just in shock and and delighted. Oh yeah, they said it was Liza's request that they oh, do it that way. Okay, they. Her vocal cords were cut because originally in the song, I, I am my own best friend. Okay. Yeah. yeah. I want to hear every morsel. <laughs> I, I'm sorry about this. I think it might be best to, um, yeah, just to keep going with the dresses. Okay, so um, the next question oh. is, uh, who was the original choreographer for Pearly who had been a dancer in That's the Foster choreography? Yankees. That's true. Wait, say that again, Charles. Yeah. Oh. yeah. Um, I'm sorry. I think I'm going to have to take Candy Burn off for a minute just because the audio is coming in a little yeah. weirdly. Um, but there's um. Okay, so who was the original choreographer for Pearly, who had been a dancer in the Fosse choreographed Damn Yankees? Do you mean the person was replaced as choreographer, or do you just mean who was the choreographer? No, who who was the choreographer? Okay. Who, who had been a dancer in what? In the Bob Fosse Damn Yankees. This has nothing Bob. to do with Chicago? No, it just Bob Fosse. Okay. I should know that, but I don't. <laughs> Does anyone have an answer? I'm hazarding a wrong guess. <laughs> <laughs> Not by Orkley. I know, I know, I know. No, uh, the answer is Lewis Johnson. Okay, um, number five, uh, Bob Fosse used a lot of elements from his first experiences in show business. The current version choreographed by Anne Reinking and directed by Walter Bobby is called Chicago, a musical. Originally, the show was billed as Chicago, a musical fill in the blank. Bob Bill, Bob Bill, All right, so Matt and Michael P and Glenn get it right. <laughs> Sorry. And then the next one is the story of Chicago was taken from a 1942 movie starring Ginger Rogers called. Roxy Hart. I. I Wait a minute. Yeah. I'll rock the heart, but it was actually based on a play called Chicago. Yeah. Oh, yeah. So everyone gets that right. Great. Um, 
But I, the movie did not have Velma Kelly. <laughs> the, the movie with Ginger Rogers didn't have Velma Kelly. Oh. But I think the movie is what Gwen saw that made her want to do it. Is the it, it, that was the story that I heard. I brought to heart. <laughs> yeah, and they got the rights to play. Yeah, and they got. And then the next question is, um, the cognac what relates to the earlier question, who spoke no English in Chicago except for the word no, was played by South American actress Graciela Danielle, as we all know now, and the language she speaks is Hungarian. The dialogue was translated by what long time Bob Fosse assistant, also a Dancers Over 40 member? <laughs> I do not know that. Let's see, I'm only sorry I can't add the anecdotes from the original Chicago that Candy would hear. But did uh, did Candy try exiting and and coming back again? Yeah, we tried that earlier. I'm and sorry that didn't work. Yeah. Oh, is there um? Can sorry? Can you hold up your answers again? Um, Nicole Fossey, no. Um, <laughs> Not Michonne Peacock, although that's a good guess. Uh, Catherine Doby is the answer. Oh, mm. um, so there. Um, Michonne Peacock was in the original cast, though. Um, number eight, uh, Michael O'Hawley, I'm guessing, billed as M. O'Hawley, was hired for the role of Mary Sunshine because his vocal range was considered to be uh, Oh, that, that, that's like a film. Oh, is considered to be... <laughs> to be, yeah, it's the name of the vocal range. Oh. <laughs> it's a personal or top name that's listed. Counter, oh, counter tenor, counter tenor. Oh, um, all right, all right. What did you say? Oh, no, it, the counter tenor is the right answer. So Matt and Glenn, you get it right. Um, um Let's see about the next one. After Mary McCarty passed suddenly, the first replacement for her role was. Uh, uh, I don't know. Yeah. Oh. No, not that one. Could have been. Um, the an the answer is Elena Reed. Oh wow! And then the final question. There's also a bonus question, but the final Chicago question is: Cheeto Rivera's original understudy was. Um, let's see, Michael. Do you have an answer? Um. <laughs> oh, um, ironically, it was someone mentioned before. It was Michonne Peacock who was oh. who was Cheeto Rivera's understudy, and then wow. <laughs> um, and there's one bonus question which is unrelated to Chicago, but here it is anyway. Um, oh, to a bit of musical theater history. What Grammy-winning jazz singer won the Best Supporting Actress Tony Award for one number in The Wiz? And you have to name the character and the actor. Uh, Let's see. And Michael P. Um, my, Matt and Michael M and Glenn all got it right. Um, it was Dee Dee Bridgewater and she played Glinda. Um, I actually just watched the movie yesterday for the first time. Ooh, that's a tough <laughs> one to get through. Yeah. It is wild for sure. It was it was research for uh, my podcast, but yes, it is a well, wild in the movie. movie Lena Hoyne is Glinda. Yeah, oh, is she ever? Anyway. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, those, yeah, those floating children, absolutely. When that, when that popped yeah. in, I was like, I had a moment. Well, I mean to me, Dee Dee Bridgewater and Kristen Chenoweth are the same type. Yeah, as far as, Glind as far as Glinda's go. Mm -hmm. Yes. Anyway. All right. Well, that's all. Sorry about all that. I hope I did an adequate job as your understudy. You did. You did. Yes, you were very good. Okay. Andy, we miss you. We hope your internet is good. 
And now we have one round left for, I guess, a surprise upset or anything like that. And now here's our illustrious asker, one of Broadway's funniest people, the great Jim Brochu. Jim Brochu is the author of the shows The Last Session, The Lucky O'Leary's, Fat Chance, and the books Lucy in the Afternoon, Murder on the Orpheum Circuit, which I enjoyed a lot, and Watching from the Wings. He performed Off-Broadway and Unfair to Goliath and The Big Voice, God or Merman, which he also wrote. And on Broadway in Brigadoon as a benefit for the Irish rep. In addition to all of this, he won a Drama Desk Award and an Ovation Award for the solo show he starred in and acted. He starred in and wrote Zero Hour. So here to ask questions about the subject of that play, the one and only Zero Mostel, the one and only Jim Brochu. Thank you for being here, Jim. Thank you, Charles. My sound was down. Could you say all that again, please? <laughs> <laughs> All right, here we go with some Zero Mostel questions. I'm excited. Even some difficult. Zero was the original star of Fiddler on the Roof. Who were the original Golda and Yenta? Oh. I'm going to say something was wrong. I spelled I spelled Maria's name wrong, but it uh, is Maria Carnalova. Oh yeah, so that's from Matt and Michael P. M. Glenn. How it read? Yes, it was Maria Carnalova and B. Arthur. Okay, ready for number two? Yes. Zero, Zero and Kate Mustel had two children. What were their names, and what profession did each one go into? I only know one. Most people do. <laughs> I don't know the second. Oh, actor. Okay, that's um. Leonard, a lawyer. <laughs> <laughs> Rose and Bloom, you just make me laugh. <laughs> I tell you that dinner we had on the ship at Prego. I mean, very fun. Please, my scissors. heart. The scissors. I'll never forget it as long as I live. Uh, anyway, uh, the answer is Josh Mostel, um, who is an actor, and Toby, who is an artist. Um, three, name the famous Greenwich Village nightclub that introduced Billy Holiday and Jack Guilford and in which Zero made his comedy debut in 1942. This is just a guess. <laughs> no. Uh, no. It was called Cafe Society. Uh, uh, yeah. Okay, four. Uh, what iconic New York dancing job did Kate Mostel have when she met Zero? And while everyone's answering this, I'd love to ask you, what was your research process like with Zero Mostel for writing this play? And well, a, a lot of it I talked to Josh, and he gave me some inside stuff, some very private stuff that I put into the show about when he was brought to meet his grandmother for the first time. Really uh, very poignant uh, material. And then I, I read everything I could. And, of course, I knew Zero, uh, not terribly well, but I knew him when I was just starting out as an actor, and he used to drive me crazy. I, I, I met him on the corner of 50th Street and Broadway one day, and I said, Z, I'm very angry at you. You promised me an autograph. And in, in, right in front of the Winter Garden, he screamed, you're not worthy. And <laughs> um, but two nights later, the autograph arrived at uh, the Cherry Lane Theater where I was doing a show. Oh, so uh, that's that's pretty much how I did it. I talked and I read and. The, the play kind of read its, uh, wrote itself. It was, uh, it was an honor to be him. Oh. And so does anyone have answers to that question about that? Oh. Open girl? Rockette? Yes, the answer is a rockette. Yeah. The two Michaels got it. <laughs> yeah. Okay, number five. How many Tony Awards did Zero win, and what shows were they for? <laughs> right. Okay. Oh, it 
looks like um, let's see. Matt, I think, is the only one who has yes, it, Yes, right? Matt is the only one who got it. Three, Rhinoceros, Fiddler, mm -hmm. and Forum. Wow. Okay. Zero played one performance in the pre-Broadway tryout of a play by Arnold Wesker, which was a new interpretation of a Shakespeare comedy. Wait, let me see if I can find this little bulbous thing. I can read this. There we go. Uh, I'm sorry. That was an adaptation of a Shakespeare comedy. He was taken ill and died in 1977. What was the name of the play and what iconic Shakespeare character did he play? Does anybody need that again? I'm sorry. I was interrupting. Yeah, you can say that one more time. Okay. Zero played one performance in the pre-Broadway tryout of a play by Arnold Wesker. It was a new interpretation of a Shakespeare comedy, and then he was taken ill and died in 1977. What was the name of the play, and what iconic Shakespeare character did he play? <laughs> it was a comedy? Shakespeare comedy. All right, well, then this is wrong, but that's the only thing I got. <laughs> what did you say? Merchant no, of Venice. Right. Merchant of Venice is a comedy. Oh, well, yeah, I, all right, I guess so. Yeah, <laughs> yeah it's technically it's speaking, a comedy. Scholar. It's a goddamn comedy, and don't you ever contradict me again. <laughs> <laughs> it's one of his big laugh riots. Didn't you know that? <laughs> I know, I know it is classified as a comedy, but that always strikes me as extremely it's odd, but nobody dies, you know? Yeah. And <laughs> he was the Neil Simon of 1612. <laughs> was the, uh, I forget, what, but what was the name of the adaptation? It was called The Merchant. The Merchant, the Merchant right. Just yeah. The Merchant, yeah. Yeah, Glenn got it. Is Mark going to take a bow? <laughs> He's with no. the dogs. All right. I can't get this one out of the screen. Um, okay. Number seven. Zero Mostel and Jack Guilford starred in the original production of Forum. Who played their parts in the 1972 revival? Is it I know Jim? one of them. <laughs> Did you see that revival, Jim? Or Oh, yes. Sure. Okay. Mm. I was already old by then, Charles. <laughs> yes. Yes. Wait. Yes, and okay. Everybody has it except Michael P. The answers are Phil Silvers and Larry Blyden. Um, okay. So All right, so do I get half a point for this one and the last one? I'm not yeah. the moderator. Ask the, mod <laughs> ask, the, ask the John Charles Daly of uh, Dancy <laughs> Over 40. Okay. Yes, yeah, that'll be a half okay. point. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Does that make you Arlene Francis? No, Jen? that makes you Dorothy Kilgallen. Oh, I'm glad. Well, uh oh, I'm going to be getting it. I know I'm too kidding, much, I'm about, kidding, I know too right. much about the assassination. <laughs> well, I lost my question. Okay. Um, Zero made his film debut in MGM's Dubarry Was a Lady in 1942, based on the Broadway play starring Ethel Merman and Burt Lahr. Who played those parts in the film? And if you were watching TCM a few months ago when I introduced this film. Which I did. Did you? And I had never seen it before. It's not worth seeing, really. It's zero well, kind it of was fun. worth it to see for you, but boy, what a weird movie. Well, I had more fun with Ben Mankiewicz. Okay, yes, yes. Uh, yeah, it's Lucille Ball and Red Skelton. So Matt's half right. I got it right. I wasn't half wrong. I just didn't put in the That's second. Right. Uh, what was Zero's real first name? Oh, sorry. I just missed Glenn. Did you get that question right? About I did. Oh. I'm just guessing. I'm guessing. Okay. That's funny, Michael Musto. Michael Musto. <laughs> Michael, you've got to start writing. You're just too clever for words. Harold, Harold, Michael Patantier, what did you say, dear? I said Joshua. And Matt? I, I'll i say Trevor, just cause. Trevor, yeah, that's a good Jewish name, isn't it, Trevor? Yeah, well, you don't know what his parents were up to that day. They were like, maybe yes. be different. Glenn, Glenn almost got that name. Can't you see Trevor Rosenblum? Yes, <laughs> yes. What, what then? No, his real first name was Samuel. Oh. Sammy, he was a Sammy. 
and uh, Zero considered his acting profession an avocation and only took jobs so he could fund his main profession. I what saw your play. Zero, what did Zero consider his main profession? If anybody saw my play, they sure know the answer to this. Yes. 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 No. And no. <laughs> Wait, I'm in the dark again. Here we are. So that. Sorry, Matt. What did I you? Just, oh, I, did, I said sports announcing because I didn't know. <laughs> but he used to say, uh, "Score sometimes during forum and fiddler when he got bored." That's true. <laughs> no, that's that's very true. He said he one night he said he announced the uh, the uh, the end of the Sonny Liston Floyd Patterson fight. He said, but I I did I said he knocked him out in round XII. Huh. That's, <laughs> that's clever. That's good. I'm just telling off the scores here, but you Jim, if you want to tell more stories, that would be great. Well, I no, I want to go to bed. <laughs> 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 I'm very old. I need to take my pills. I've just been prescribed a new pill, which is nothing but side effects. Oh, okay. <laughs> That's all it is. <laughs> Tremors, lack of balance. I mean, you name it. And it does absolutely nothing for me. Are people watching this? <laughs> yes. Oh, <I'm> really? <laughs> My deepest apologies to you all. <laughs> and then, so I'm just telling up the scores from all the rounds here. And then in a second, we'll have a winner. Um, yes. I think we know who the winner is. <laughs> yes. I'm going to bone up on my Joe Layton knowledge. That you did. Matt, did you do it? Did you put it over the top? With Joe, did I put it what over the top? Do your score? Are you the winner of tonight? We'll I, find out for so. I don't know. I really, you know, messed up the bet in Joe Layton and Zero, so we'll see what happens. Oh. Well, I can only run so far. <laughs> but yeah, if anyone wants to tell any stories while just while I'm telling this. Um do you have a calculator, maybe? Jim, Jim, what was uh, Zero's favorite show that he did on Broadway? I think it was um, Ulysses in Nighttown. Wow. I, he adored doing that that James Joyce work. He adored it. And it's isn't, also there, isn't there a, um, is there a film of Rhinoceros with him? Yes. Is there up at the... Uh, with uh, him and, and Gene Wilder, no? And yeah. uh, Eli Wallace. It's one of those yeah. AFI movies. Yeah, I, keep a, I actually keep a Hirschfeld on my wall of Eli Wallach and Zero. It's it's an amazing caricature from Ry Rhinoceros, and he's turning into the rhinoceros. You know, somebody said to a Zero said he overheard a, a conversation at Sardi's one night that I said uh, that the guy said, hey, I just saw Mostel. He turns himself into a raging, roaring beast during the show. And the other actor said, I've never seen him in a show where he didn't. <laughs> <laughs> well, actually, Rhinoceros would probably be a good play to revive right now, if you know what I mean. Yes, you're right. You're absolutely right, Michael. Yeah. Yeah. That's true. There are people are turning into rhinoceroses yes, right before are. our eyes, aren't they? Well, if there was anybody watching this before, they certainly aren't now. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I have the final scores here now. So um, I will read them from starting at the bottom, going to the top. So, uh, <laughs> oh, good. I'll, I'll be first. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. No, at the bottom is um, uh, Michael Musto with 14.5. Um, I'm scoring it. We technically did 51 questions, but I'm scoring it out of 50 because there was one where nobody got it right. So I'm just dropping that one. Um, and then, then we have Michael Portantier with 16 and two thirds. Then we have Glenn Rosenblum with 22. And then Matt Kovlik with 25 and one third. So. Wow. Uh, in this game and the prize, and I'll bring John on. He can. Hi, John. 
All right, I was like champing at the bit. I'm so sorry about, about Candy. Uh, just so you guys know, I wrote my master's thesis on Bob Fosse. And so I knew Gwen Burden, and we've done a lot of things with Nicole. And so when you were talking about all these things, I wanted to like chip in a bit. Number one, David Rounds was so wonderful in Chicago as the agent. And all they had to do is give Mary McC McCarthy the, the line, I talked to my boys at William Mars, and they said, and there went his, his role. So Fosse gave him a watch. And evidently, he died like getting struck by a car on a bicycle. It was so sad. He was a brilliant actor. He was in Morning yeah. Seven. It was, he was a great actor. And as far as Gwen goes and uh, the surgery, Gwen had problems this week. Charity with the confetti coming down and got in her throat. And the same thing happened in Chicago. And so, so that's why she was out for the vocal, you know, part there. And as far as uh, how and what happened with Chicago. Gwen was transfixed by the original play by Maureen Dallas Watkins, and she tried to get the rights for like 40 years, and the damn woman wouldn't die. <laughs> so finally, when she died, she got the rights, and so that's when they got to do Chicago. And I have the original uh, manuscript that they started with that used, that was based on her play, that they started to work on the Chicago Broadway musical, because I was <clears throat> dating one of the guys in Chicago. Also, and so he gave me the original uh, with all these other songs and all these other things that were in there. Uh, that was just, uh, you know, wonderful. So let me see, is that all? Oh, and Lenore Nemitz. Lenore was the only person to do when in one afternoon and Cheetah that night. I mean, she was yeah. incredible. She understudied both of them and could go on for either one of them. Um, she was just tre tremendous. And the last time I saw her <clears throat> was when she did uh, Mazeppa in Patti LuPone's Gypsy. And she was a member of Dancers Over 40 as well uh, for a while. Um, so, uh, so Fosse and Dancers Over 40 goes way back. We did a I, I'm Not Lola. Uh, we did a uh, Fosse Burden Legacy um, event. We did the men of Fosse, the women of Fosse. And we had all these people perform. And in 2012, Dancers Over 40 did a concert at Alvin Ailey where we reunited the original Cell Black Tango ladies with the drag queen, Stella Doro, Be Quiet, Michael Musto. And, <laughs> and, uh, and then uh, we got as many, Graciela was not available and neither was Pam Sousa. So we got understudies for them. Uh, Candice Tovar and, uh, oh, I forgot the other lady that understudied. And so we had a little discussion about what it was like uh, to do the show and do the Philly, you know, um, tryouts and then come in and the songs that were cut and how, you know, Cheetah would always say when was when she was asked, who was the best dancer? She would just say, I'm here, Cheetah's here. I mean, I'm here, Gwen is here. I mean, that was just her normal answer. You know, because Gwen was on in a in a status of her own, you know, and uh, Cheetah just adored her. Uh, so um so, anyway, so that's one of the best things about Dancers Over 40, learning all these things from these people, from Candy, from Cheryl Clark, from Catherine Doby, who was such a task mistress when we did the fifth 40th anniversary of Dancing. You know, and she got them all together to do Dancing Man. I mean, 40 years later, when Salento and all these people were on stage, and Ryan King, one of her last times on stage was the 40th anniversary of Dancing. And Ben Green just showed up and just happened to go on stage and sing Life's a bowl of cherries with Anne Reinking. I mean, these things happen at Dancers Over 40 events. So uh, I do want to, uh, you know, get you guys to at least come to some of our events because they are wonderful. They are just wonderful. So thank you again. Thank you. Charles, and thank, thank you. Thank you so much. And, and uh, I will be sending some of you some video of uh, Stella doing uh, an Alex Corey number. Thank you, everyone, for watching. Bye. My favorite. Thank you, Alex. Thank you, Candy. I'm sorry this everybody. happened. Candy, so nice to meet you. Nice yes. to meet you too. Lovely to see all of you. It was just great. Oh yes, thank you, and thank you everyone who watched, and and have a great night. I'm gonna get one more picture you with everybody. Too. Everybody, wave and smile while I get this picture of everybody. <laughs> okay. Okay. Thank you all. Bye, everyone. Bye. Bye.